Joan writes with a question about uh, post-rotator cuff surgery. You know, I, I'm starting to think that, you know, like 70% of people <laughs> are going to get rotator cuff surgery at some point in their life. And, and the other thing I'm starting to think is that um, eventually everybody at Graystill is going to get cataract surgery. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's just, it, it's going around. Um, Joan says, hi, I'm a 65-year-old woman and I've done various exercises throughout my life. I began lifting here in Denver at Starting Strength in April of 2022. Good for you. And fell in love with it. Yeah, we get that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in December 22, I had rotator cuff surgery, partial full thickness tear of the supraspinatus, and an interstitial tear of my biceps tendon. Extremely common lesions that we see all the time in lifters and non-lifters. I've had a similar surgery on my other shoulder several years ago. A couple of months before the surgery, I stopped being able to do bench and overhead press. So I started doing rows, squats, using the safety bar, deadlifts, and landmines on the non-affected side. Uh, I should probably know what landmines are, but I don't. Um, my question is this. Is there a way to begin lifting without using my arms so that I can keep my strength? It's scary how much I've lost in just a couple of months. I'll be fully that released happens. by my surgeon and PT in June or July, and I'm willing to wait that long, but I'd rather not. I can talk to my trainer at SS, but I'd like to hear from people my age who have gone through this. Um, she sent us this on February 16th, June or July? It seems like a long time to have to Damn. wait to start loading those. Um, that seems a little excessive to me, but I'm not going to contradict your surgeon. Um, I will tell you this, there is a way for you, uh, let me back up. I have to say, and you know that I have to say, that you should do what your surgeon tells you. Yeah. Um, that's what you should do. Um, whether I would do what my surgeon told me is another matter. Um, can you lift without using your arms? Uh, more or less, yes. Um, so, Abelman, the previous questioner, should um, basically start low bar squatting and let you borrow his safety bar for a while. That's I was exactly thinking that. That's exactly what should happen. You should get under a safety bar and start doing safety it bar shouldn't, squats. Shouldn't bother him too much, so, right? It would be all right. And then, um, you know, you can start doing one-armed uh, dumbbell presses and dumbbell curls and stuff like that. And um, you, would, you might think that you could also do deadlifts, but here's the problem with that. The problem with doing deadlifts is that your rotator cuff actually plays a huge role yeah. in the deadlift, right? So um, by, by stabilizing, what, it's, it's important to understand that the, that the rotator cuff muscles are not prime movers of the shoulder. They are not the prime force generators of the shoulder. Um, what they are is shoulder stabilizers and shoulder fine adjusters. The way I always think about the rotator cuff muscles are when you look at like the Apollo missions and the, 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 the capsule, the command module that stays in orbit around the moon while Neil Armstrong goes down and you look at it and it's got that great big nozzle in the end of it, that's the prime mover. And if you look on the side of the spacecraft, there's these little boxes of nozzles pointing in all these different little directions, right? The stabilizers that do the fine maneuvering, that's what your rotator cuff muscles are. And they finely maneuver and position the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa of the shoulder joint. That's what the rotator cuff muscles do. The rotator cuff muscles are also pulling on the humerus. They're pulling the humerus back into the glenohumeral joint during the deadlift. So they're actually playing a role. And the deadlift can strengthen the rotator cuff muscles in that manner. Um, but until your surgeon cleared you for a lifting, I wouldn't let you do deadlifts for precisely that reason. Again, this strikes me as a rather long recovery interval for rotator cuff surgery without loading. Um, but again, I would encourage you to follow your, your surgeon's directions. And um, I would focus on conditioning. That's what I was going to that, say. That, that doesn't uh, use your arms. And I would find a safety bar squat and I would safety bar squat. And if you are able to get your safety bar squat somewhere back within, uh, within striking distance 
of what your working weights used to be, when you come back to the deadlift, you're going to be in good shape. Press, bench, that's, it's going to suck to be you when you first come back to the gym for a few months because you're just going to lose a lot of strength there, and you'll get it back if you're diligent and, um, and you're well-coached, which if you're at Starting Strength Denver, you're well-coached. So, um, you know, uh, go forth and, and do good. I think it's all going to be fine um, in the long term. What I have... What I have noticed is that when people are on a break from training for whatever reason, uh, even if you can't do these main lifts, uh, if you just stay active while you're out, the, the strength losses are really minimized. So uh, if there... If the gym you go to doesn't have a safety squat bar, um, you know, a lot of other commercial gyms will have, uh, or maybe powerlifting gyms will have belt squat machines that strap, it's like a dip belt that straps around your waist and the weight is beneath the platform mm -hmm. you're standing on. I don't know if, they, I'm sure they probably don't have that, but, um, but they some don't. commercial gyms have those. Um, something like that might work, but even if you don't have access to anything like that, uh, see if you can, Put on a heavy backpack and go for a hike or something. Yeah, do uh, do uh, bike intervals, something like Wingates, or do yeah. or do stairmaster intervals. Uh, if you stay active, your body won't. You'll be okay. Your body won't think that you have no reason to hold on to the the uh, the muscle that you've gained, and so you'll be fine, right? And and again, uh, even if June or July is when you're not supposed to lift by, uh, you know that's not that far away. You'll, you'll make it, and then you'll start working back up when, when, you, uh, when, when you're able to do these movements again. And you, you say it's scary how much I've lost in just a couple of months. I know what you're saying, yeah. but in reality, you don't actually know how much you've lost. And what we find when people come back is they haven't lost as much as they thought they had. So, for example... They're um, sort of out of shape of yeah, doing our guy, of that performance. Our guy, uh, uh, John, who dropped the engine block on his foot, yeah. <laughs> dropped the engine block, hobbled in here. He actually did a couple of warm-up sets with a Liz Frank fracture. Thank you. <laughs> and so he dropped 500 pounds on his foot, came in here the next day to squat, did a couple of warm-up sets, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> My foot hurts. <laughs> Great big wa purple watermelon. It's like, go get that x-ray. Yeah, it's broken. So, and it was a bad fracture, Liz Frank fracture. He was out for months. And he's like, yeah, I can't believe how much I... Man, and he hadn't lost that as much as he thought. You know, he's, and he's already back within... He's been back what? How long has been back? A couple of months, maybe. No. He's already... He, yeah, maybe not even that long. He's already starting to get, you know... And he's move, he, the movement patterns are still there. That's the other thing. Right. You're not going to lose the movement patterns. You added muscle mass to get strong, right, over the, the last year of training, right? You didn't lose all that muscle mass. And, all you and again, if you stay active exactly. as best you can, even if that is just walking or something, um, if you stay active when you're out of the gym, your body's not just going to start cannibalizing muscle tissue. You'll be all right. You'll, 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 you'll lose 10 to 20% off the top, and after that, it'll take a lot longer for the rest of it to go away. Yeah. Listen, um, thank you for your question, Joan, and do us a favor. Um, at some point, um, send us a follow-up and let us know how it goes, okay? Uh, next one's nice? for you, no, it's Chris. Chris Diaz. Uh-huh. Uh, hi, I just purchased the barbell prescription. It is just what I was looking for, good. Yay. Uh, and I am 67 years old, a uh, 67 year old retired individual leading a sedentary lifestyle. Been weightlifting since 2019 after a huge gap of almost 20 years. It's a common story that I've heard. Mm -hmm. Have tried several training programs and have been switching them from one to another. However, it feels that yours is the right one for me. What I would like to know is whether to start with your novice program or can I start off with the intermediate program with some Olympic lifting? Would love to have your valuable feedback. Cheers. It's an easy one. Yeah. Uh, you, a novice program 
novice programming is not for beginners. Yeah, it's also for beginners or like newbies or it's something. It's not just for beginners. Yeah, but it's for everybody who's coming back. From a 20-year right? layoff. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> or whatever the layoff, if, yeah. If I can't lift for a whole month because I was sick and then, you know, uh, family things happened or whatever, uh, I start back with a yeah. novice mm -hmm. program, a very simple, full mm -hmm. body, you know, three workouts, two or three times a week program. Um, just like a brand new person would, uh, because that's all I need at that point. So just start with a novice program. Don't think of it as um, a beginner program. Think of it more as just the first step. It's the first step in programming for everyone. Also, uh, no, you cannot have Olympic lifts in your program for several reasons. One of them is First of that, all, that's not a novice program. Right. Uh, the biggest thing, though, is that Olympic lifts are very technical lifts. They're very fast lifts. So you have to be uh, technically proficient in the blink of an eye. Uh, they take a lot of extra time to practice those movements, which is time that you're taking away from, for you, more valuable movements that you could be doing that would... That would um, increase your quality of life more substantially. Uh, and those Olympic lifts build on this, a solid foundation of the, the slow lift, lifts, yeah. right? The main lifts. Um, you would be better served to just do a boring two day a week novice, novice program with the basic four main lifts uh, for really quite a while. I mean, the, the, the time it takes, not saying that you can't do Olympic lifts at some point in the future. Absolutely uh, not. W when you become more proficient in those. What I, here's my thing. Anytime someone wants to do Olympic lifts, they have to have rock solid deadlift technique first. It has to come first because they build on that deadlift technique. And I would even argue that it builds on... Uh, well, squatting technique to some extent. I mean, a clean is a front squat, right? Um, and even if you're going to do like a clean and jerk, um, that overhead press position, I think that it's informed by a really good strict press. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need to understand all of those things really, uh, really well uh, to be able to do good in Olympic lifting. And again, though, uh, also, Olympic lifting takes a lot more of a commitment. There's a lot more of a time commitment. It needs more frequent uh, performance. And um, they're more dynamic and explosive. They, they, are, uh, they are the imposition, the production of more dynamic and explosive forces on the barbell, which means, once again, thank you, Isaac Newton, that the barbell exerts more dynamic and explosive forces on you, Yeah. right? And for 67-year-old joints, that can be a problem sometimes. That can be kind of tough. That can be kind of tough. So absolutely, we're not condemning you to a life without Olympic lifting. See our video on that and our three criteria. You have to have the desire, you have to have the aptitude, and you have to have the tolerance. You have to have all three. Uh, and if you do, you can do Olympic lifting, but not now. Yeah. Right? And if you're starting from a sedentary lifestyle, yeah, not there good. are, I mean, not, you, have to, you don't have to wait this long. But without, before you introduce Olympic lifts, but there are years of boring novice programming style uh, uh, lifting ahead of you that will be very beneficial yeah, boring. before you would maybe like need but, Olympic lifting. But what if something. I turn to you, Noah? Like you're an advanced lifter and I'm an advanced lifter. We're both on relatively advanced programs. At least I am. I'm on a fairly complex program. You probably are too. Yeah. If I turned to you and I said, what if I told you I was a genie and I could make it so that your current level of strength you could train as a novice? For what lift? For any of them. Oh boy. <laughs> you would jump at it, wouldn't you? Press. <laughs> yeah, right? So take like, press. I'd like to be a novice. Yeah. I would like to add weight to my bar could every you imagine single that? time I walk A couple pounds a week to your press. Wouldn't that be awesome? For a couple months. Right? Listen, That'd be amazing. you want to be a novice. Yeah. yeah the, I, like, so I can tell from the way you're asking this question, it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to start as a novice. I want to start as an intermediate because I've got a remote history of lifting. No, you don't. You want to 
You want to be a novice. Yeah, it'd be fun. Right? Uh, it, everybody who gets to be an intermediate or an advanced intermediate, they're going to say, I wish I was still a novice. I wish I was still adding weight to the bar every time I walked in the gym. Mm -hmm. that, it, being a novice in barbell training is like this magical time. Go ahead and let yourself live that, right? Because soon enough, you won't be able to do that anymore. Soon enough, you'll hit that elbow, that curve in your, that, that plateau in your strength curve, and you'll be an intermediate. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy a novice progression and stay away from the Olympic list for now until you've gained some strength and you've gained some mobility, um, and maybe until you can get on the platform with a coach who's qualified to teach the clean and or the snatch and can ascertain whether or not um, you, you pass that threefold test for Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question.